Rio's recap here. In the coming future, Earth gets ruined by nuclear wars, making it really hard to live there. To find a solution, some groups of people are sent to the moon to create a base for future homes. But the plan to settle there doesn't work out, so they start mining the moon for resources instead. Miners spend 20 years working, and then they can fly to a planet called Omega, where people are doing well. The journey to Omega takes 75 years, so the travelers have to be put in a deep sleep called cryosleep. It's been 50 years since people settled on the moon, and now lots of kids have been born here. They're tired of being stuck, living in the mines, and doing the same things every day. The year is now 2257, there are rumors about a weird object hitting the moon and making a big hole, but nobody is allowed to go closer to it and check it out. One day, a group of kids sneak around the hangar, planning to take a rover and escape from the mines. Whenever they spot an adult, they hide behind things, but then they pop out again to argue about what to do next. Dylan tries to activate the rover, but oops. He accidentally triggers an alarm. While everyone argues about it, Caleb looks at a small capsule in his hands and thinks about how they ended up in this situation. Caleb's dad passed away, and since his mom died seven years ago, he doesn't have any family left. He's supposed to go to Omega, where a new family will adopt him. Thanks to Cryosleep, he'll still be a kid when he gets there. Caleb doesn't want to leave because all his friends are here, but no one pays attention to his complaints. He's told that he'll be leaving in three days, once a meteor shower has passed. Caleb's mind drifts back to the times when his dad, Michael, taught him not to be afraid of the really tall ladders at the base. They climbed one together, and while looking at the sky, Michael shared stories about the stars and how family might be gone but still remains with them in spirit. He also wanted Caleb to see the crater before he passed away. Feeling nostalgic, Caleb goes back to that spot to relive the memory. Soon, his best friends Borny, Dylan, and Marcus join him. Learning about Caleb's impending departure saddens his friends, but understanding his father's last wish, Dylan suggests they embark on one final adventure together. They decide to sneak out of the base to fulfill Michael's desire to see the crater. Gathering essential tools for their journey, they go through their findings. During this, an officer visits Caleb, delivering the little capsule containing Michael's ashes. As they plan, the boys realize they need base passcodes to leave, and they ponder on how to obtain them during lunch. Dylan takes a chance and approaches Addison, a girl who's new to the moon and has no friends because everyone finds her a bit strange. Her father is on the science team, giving her access to the codes they need. Dylan's first attempt is awkward, and a suspicious Addison walks away. Realizing he needs to be honest, Dylan catches up with her and confesses his true intentions. Addison, longing for adventure and envious of the boys' friendship, agrees to help them get the codes on the condition that she can join the adventure. In the present, Caleb manages to pull a wire from the rover, silencing the alarm just before a lockdown is announced. With the rover now accessible, the kids climb in, and Dylan assumes control of the wheel as he's the only one familiar with driving it. Caleb enters the code that Addison secured for them, while she adds a small bobblehead astronaut to the control panel, explaining that it's a tradition from Earth. As they traverse a lengthy corridor, Caleb reflects on his father's final words. Finally, they reach the outside and witness the moon's landscape for the first time ever. Pausing to appreciate the breathtaking view and allowing Marcus to take his heart medicine, the group moves along the road and comes across a massive, aesthetically pleasing structure, despite its abandonment. Caleb reveals that Michael shared details about it, a remnant from the failed attempt to colonize the moon before the discovery of Omega. However, once Omega was found, people forgot about the moon, turning it into a desolate place. Addison, not fully understanding the significance, questions the fuss, suggesting it's just twenty years before they can leave. Unaware of the actual situation, being the daughter of a higher-up, she is yet to discover the truth. Any small mistake, such as arriving late or falling ill, could extend their contractual time. If someone dies before completing their twenty years, their next of kin must fulfill the remaining time along with their own. It's a clever trap designed to keep families working on the moon indefinitely. Realizing the severity of their situation, Addison apologizes for her earlier rudeness and lifts everyone's spirits by sharing stories about Earth, describing things like trees, the blue sky, and the ocean. After driving for a while, they decide to stop the rover, put on their suits, and take a walk on the moon's surface. Addison, coming from a more privileged background, 
has a better suit that surprises the boys with how attractive she looks. Exiting the rover, they immediately start playing around with the lower gravity, reveling in the ability to jump extra high. They also catch their first glimpse of Earth, marveling at its vibrant blue appearance. Inspired by the sight, Addison decides to teach the boys about baseball, improvising with stones and sticks as makeshift equipment. However, the low gravity causes the hit rock to soar too far, confusing the boys about running through the bases. Disappointed, Addison decides to take a moment alone. Overwhelmed with nostalgia for her old home, Addison reaches up as if trying to hold Earth in her hand, almost in tears. Abruptly, she hears a noise and turns around to find the boys using an oxygen tank to fly. They ensure they're tied to the rover with a cable, using the combination of gravity and the tank's expulsion to push them upwards. Addison considers it a dangerous idea that wastes oxygen, but Dylan persuades her to join by implying she might be a coward. Reluctantly, she agrees, and soon everyone is playing together, taking turns to see who can reach greater heights. Initially, the flying with oxygen tanks is all good fun, but when it's Borny's turn again, his cable breaks, and he starts floating around uncontrollably. The kids quickly grab more oxygen tanks and use them to join Borny, aiming to assist their friend. Unable to control their trajectory, there's a lot of chaotic floating, resulting in collisions between them. However, this unintentional crashing enables them to grab onto each other and combine enough weight to eventually fall back to the lunar surface. With a significant amount of oxygen wasted, they become uncertain about reaching the crater. Caleb suggests they could find more oxygen at an old outpost from the initial settlement. Borny strongly opposes the idea of going to the outpost, fueled by stories from his brother about ghosts haunting the place. Dylan, not holding back, calls Borny's brother a loser, prompting Borny to retaliate by insulting Dylan's family. The exchange escalates into a fight that even Marcus, attempting to intervene, gets caught up in. Amidst the yelling and chaos, Caleb raises his voice, reminding them that this isn't how they should spend their last days together. His words prompt apologies and reconciliation between the boys. However, upon reaching the outpost, they find it shrouded in total darkness inside. Walking through a corridor, the group is startled by the sight of human-like shapes, causing them to scream in fear. Once they switch on the lights, they realize it's just a collection of mannequins. Addison notices that this isn't an outpost, rather, it's a house meant to showcase what they would construct for the moon's colonization. While exploring, Dylan opens up to Addison about his father running away from everything, providing context to Borny's earlier comments. Caleb, coming across a mannequin, can't help but think of his own father, reminiscing about the times he shared stories about Caleb's mom. The kids, eventually discover oxygen tanks and a stash of food in the storage, prompting them to spend the night there. After eating, they light a fire, and Addison shares more stories about Earth, including the diverse cultures and belief systems that were lost. She also confides in them about her parents' divorce, her mother and brother have left for Omega, in cryosleep for 75 years, leaving Addison unable to communicate with her brother anymore. Out of the blue, music starts playing when Borny presses a mysterious button. They realize the house is controlled by a main computer, prompting Caleb to reflect on the unfairness of abandoning beautiful things like art. Consumed by furious anger towards the system, the kids decide to vent their frustration by destroying the house. They leave nothing untouched, every object, except the main computer, is smashed. They jump on the bed for a playful pillow fight and run through every room without a care. Later, as most of the boys drift off to sleep, Addison stays awake. Caleb joins her, opening up about the significance of his friendship with Dylan. He recalls how Dylan shared his food when Caleb had none and expresses concern about what might happen to Dylan after he's gone. Feeling a sense of responsibility for his friend, Caleb urges Addison to promise that she will be there for Dylan and support him after Caleb departs. The next morning, the kids resume their journey on the rover, but after a few hours, the vehicle runs out of battery. While the boys argue about what to do next, Addison takes charge and sends out a distress signal. She points out that they have several hours until a rescue team arrives due to the lockdown, providing enough time for them to reach the crater on foot and return for rescue later. They all wear their suits once again and walk until they finally reach the very big crater. Caleb reminisces about his father, Michael, and recalls the promise he made to visit the crater one day. As they peer into the crater, they are astonished to discover a glowing structure surrounded by peculiar pillars. 
One of these pillars bears the inscription, The past is never far away. To their surprise, a door on the floor opens, revealing stairs leading to a corridor with breathable air. As they explore further, the kids come across a room containing only a fake tree in the center of a black circle. An inscription in the room speaks about skies left behind. Addison, recognizing the type of room, frantically presses on the walls until a panel opens, revealing a button. When she pushes it, a white light envelopes the room, and they are instantly transported to Earth. For the first time in their lives, the boys experience the beauty of nature and the vivid blue sky. Though they soon realize it's a hologram, the encounter remains an extraordinary experience. During their exploration, Caleb discovers a star on the floor. As he removes the panel beneath it, the hologram ends, exposing his mother's ashes and a photograph of his parents together. Having grasped Michael's intentions for him visiting the crater, Caleb takes the picture for himself and leaves Michael's ashes with those of his wife. Despite the sentimental discovery, Caleb is now deeply upset as he still doesn't want to leave the moon, considering it his true home. However, Dylan highlights that everyone's dream is to escape the moon and live a good life in Omega. He encourages Caleb not to squander the opportunity, emphasizing that his father would not have wanted him to. Suddenly, Marcus falls, feeling sick, and it becomes apparent that being outside has reduced his blood pressure. They all assist Marcus in leaving the building so they can retrieve his medicine. However, upon reaching outside, they realize the meteor shower has already started. Borny is terrified, but Caleb delivers an encouraging pep talk, boosting everyone's morale. Running under the shower, they carry Marcus while dodging meteors falling around them. The boys are swift and manage to reach the rover within minutes. Unfortunately, a meteor falls too close to Addison, causing her to stumble and forcing her to seek refuge behind a rock. Realizing Addison is missing, Borny stays behind at the rover to administer Marcus's medicine while Caleb and Dylan go back to rescue her. Upon reaching Addison, a meteorite hits Dylan, rendering him unconscious. Fortunately, their suits come equipped with a repair gun, allowing them to quickly seal the cracks on Dylan's helmet before they resume running. Despite meteors falling perilously close, Caleb falls while carrying Dylan. Addison extends a helping hand, assisting Caleb in getting back on his feet, and they ultimately reach the rover safely. Unfortunately, they realize that the rover's window was also shattered by a meteor, leaving them dependent on the limited oxygen remaining in their suits. Doubting that anyone will come for them due to the ongoing meteor shower, the kids resign themselves to falling asleep, knowing they will at least die together when their oxygen runs out. Some minutes later, Dylan wakes up, and he and Caleb reconcile with the fact that Caleb will be leaving before the lack of air renders him unconscious. As he closes his eyes, Dylan swears he can hear the sound of people approaching. Later, Caleb wakes up and is devastated to discover that he is already here in Omega and was not given the chance to say goodbye to his best friends. In his bag, Caleb discovers the picture of his parents and Addison's bobblehead. A nurse also brings him a digital player containing messages sent by his friends over the past 75 years. Caleb listens to their stories, learning about the lives they led. Marcus initiated a baseball team, while Addison orchestrated a strike to enhance contracts for the miners, which turned out to be successful. Borney assumed the role of lead administrator. Dylan and Addison eventually tied the knot, started a family, and even became grandparents. Caleb experiences a mix of emotions, feeling both sad and happy as he listens to the voices of his friends evolving over the years without him. Starting a new life on Omega, he quickly finds himself adopted by a foster family who provides him with a good life. It takes Caleb some time to adapt and make new friends, but eventually, he learns to move on. In time, he decides to seek out Addison's brother. When he finds him, Caleb presents him with the bobblehead and shares the messages, recounting the adventurous day they had together on the moon. This gesture serves as a way for Caleb to reconnect with the past and share the memories of their shared experiences. I hope you enjoy watching our recap video. Do subscribe and click the notification button to help the growth of this channel.